else do we account for his toadying, his kowtowing to Putin, except that Putin's got something on him or they got something together? How else do you account for it? It's compromise. That's what it is. And I would say that we've got to go back to the comments made by the Trump boys earlier, where they said, we, get, we don't need U.S. banks. We get all the money we need from Russia. Uh, there are lots of clues that have sprinkled um, along this path that added together probably had something to do with the opening of this counterintelligence investigation. I think we don't know the half of it, and we're just trying to grasp at various elements. But for them to, for the FBI to start a, a counterintelligence investigation in the first three or four months of the Trump presidency is pretty remarkable. Remarkable. So Why I you, think that they must yeah. have something that we don't know about. What was your reaction when you read the Times story? I'll get to the Post story in a minute. When you read about this whole question of the FBI agents going after Trump because they thought he was part of the Russian effort in 2016, trying to help them cover it up, what did you think when you read that? Well, I, I frankly thought there's something here that, that I don't know about. Uh, mm. I think that it's either you've got a useful idiot or you've got an unwitting uh, participant or agent here. And, but I, for Trump, it all, it all comes down to money. And I'm convinced that it had to do with the fact that he had so many of his condos that were purchased by Russians, hundreds of them. There were so many of the LLCs that we believe have Russian addresses. So the combination of all of that, uh, the comments by his sons, uh, I think that, um, I think that all, will come together uh, in a nice big fat package at some point. Well, today, Donald Trump, the president, is responding to the revelation that he was investigated as an agent by the, by the FBI by blasting the FBI as, quote, dirty cops. Uh, this is James Cagney stuff, you dirty rats. He says they're just out to get him. Here we go. Here's the president doing his street corner response. The people doing that investigation were people that have been caught that are known scoundrels there in, I guess you could say, they're dirty cops. Well, it follows an avalanche of attacks that the president offered up in Twitter this weekend, all attempting to scapegoat the FBI. However, as we've seen since the outset of this investigation, Trump has used one excuse after another to deflect blame and discredit the work of real law enforcement. I call it the Russian hoax, one of the great hoaxes. It's a Democrat hoax that was brought up as an excuse for losing an election. It is incredible, the deep state, where they don't even look at her. Isn't it incredible? And it is a witch hunt. If you look at the FBI uh, statements with Strzok and his lover, Lisa Page. You look at Brennan, you look at Clapper, you look at Hayden. I think Bruce Orr is a disgrace. Some of the people at the top were rotten apples. James Comey was one of them. Next, look, during look, the course look. of the election. How many times do I have to answer this question? Can you just say Russia yes no is on a it? ruse. It's all a ruse. They have nothing to do with Russia. They're investigating something that never happened. You, you mean, let's talk about being human beings. Uh, an American, uh, most Americans, I think, are patriotic to different ways, different ways they express it. Uh, if you're accused of being a foreign agent against this country, uh, your reaction would be, I would think, personal. Uh, and you would begin to say, let me by explain to people that are actually listening to me. I was trying to cut a deal with the Russians. I wasn't going to be knee jerk restarting the Cold War. I didn't want to do all that the diplomatic professors were doing. I thought we're falling back in that trap of the Cold War. So I was trying to work a little nice. I was trying to do a couple things. Try to explain if he's innocent. But his defense has been screw you. His defense has been to trash the people going after, including all kinds of government bureau uh, bureaucrats and good FBI agents. He doesn't act in a way, it seems to me most normal, I'm going to get to Greg on this, but most normal people do if they're accused. I think you also have to remember that this was a president who ran on being a law and order president. He says that he calls himself a nationalist because he says that that's a patriotic term. A he Russian also said that in his, in his campaign slogan was make America great again. And his whole idea was about how much he loved America. 
I would think that if he could, you would think that he would offer that as someone who understands media and messaging and say, I, I love America. This is what I believe. Instead, it took him more than 24 hours to say, I don't work for Russia. That's pretty remarkable. And it's it's telling that even people inside the White House were saying, you need to get this answer right. And when we put you out on the, on the White House lawn this morning, you better answer that question in a very definitive way, which is what he did. There was a great movie many years ago called No Way Out with Kevin Costner. And at the end of the movies, he turns out to be the agent. He's speaking in fluent Russian. I sometimes think we're getting near that. You know, he's going to just start talking to us in Russian, yelling at us. I mean, why doesn't he speak? We have dealt with defendants. Is there a normal way a defendant behaves? When they're well, innocent? Have you ever met one that was innocent? Well, I don't know. That's, uh, that's a good question. Most aren't, of course, in, the, in, in criminal cases. But it, it is one thing, of course, Chris, as you mentioned, for the president to criticize the, the men and women of the FBI and the and DOJ the way he has. But what he's, in effect, doing oftentimes is criticizing his own appointees. Chris Ray is director of the FBI, and Rod Rosenstein is yeah. the deputy attorney general. You know, th th they, they have been part of much of, most of, these, this investigation, at least in recent months. And so it makes no sense at all for him to criticize them. But what's, what's striking about that criticism, it's not surprising at this point, but what's striking is that we hear nothing from Capitol Hill. We hear nothing from otherwise uh, very, very supportive members of Congress, supportive of the FBI and DOJ and of law yeah. enforcement generally, criticizing the criticism that the president has yeah. levied against those public servants. It makes no sense. The last time I remember that happening when George Bush Sr., who just passed away, defended uh, the FBI because, uh, and he quit the NRA for a while because they called them jackbooted thugs, <laughs> right? Right, yeah. I haven't heard much. The Republicans should be for law enforcement, I think. Anyway, the U.S. Congressman Jackie Spear, thank you for joining us tonight. Michael Schmidt, congratulations as a journalist. Another huge story. Uh, Yamiche Alcindor, it's always great to have your analysis. And Greg Brower, thank you for the legal aspects. Coming up, the other explosive Russian report. This could be just as big. I mean, the Washington Post is reporting that President Trump hid details, hid the details of all of his five meetings with Vladimir Putin from his own staff. He confiscated notes from his interpreter after one meeting and told him not to tell any other government official. This is the president of the United States. Don't tell anybody else. In my hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.